So blueprints in update 7 are pretty dang crazy. And using them, I've been able to make a tremendous amount of progress in a very short amount of time. And now we have automated one of the most complicated parts in all of the game. Which brings us one step closer to our ultimate goal. To automating nuclear pasta. One of the space elevator parts we need to beat the game. So we are only a few steps away now. And we need some radio control units. That kind of boxy thing there. And that will allow us to make pressure conversion cubes. And that will be our goal today. So hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory, where we want the cube. The most complicated cube in the game! But yes, we need the radio control units, which are no easy feat in themselves. They require some crazy stuff no matter which method you use. Uh, we're going to be using this alternate though, which uses aluminum casings, some crystal oscillators, and computers to make two radio control units per minute. We need to make a lot of these bad boys though. I think like a hundred or something like that. Regardless, we're gonna need a ton of computers then, which requires a whole mess of other stuff, a whole mess of these crystal oscillators, and aluminum. Good thing is though, we are well prepared for this endeavor. We don't have to worry about aluminum because we are processing all of it already. And using our incredible amount of infrastructure, we're actually bringing in most other items too. Like the quick wire, quartz crystals, and copper ingots. Like I mentioned before with blueprints, setting up automation is pretty easy, so all in this project shouldn't be too bad, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Cause still at the end of the day, we need like 40 manufacturers and countless assemblers. So this entire space is gonna get crazy busy by the end of the day. Also, we don't even have everything. We need more water. Because I want to start making some computers first, and I need circuit boards to do so. And I'm just going to use the standard copper sheet and silica recipe at the top there. And the water will be for refineries that are going to make ourselves some steamed copper sheets. And then we're going to need quartz crystals later on for the crystal oscillators, which requires more water. So we have to go on a little bit of a shopping trip <laughs> five feet over this way where we have a beautiful resource well ready for us. And to be honest, I never really knew if we needed all this water here, but <laughs> looks like it's coming in clutch now. And it actually should be enough water in this resource well to fulfill all of our needs at the factory there. Because I think this is all pure nodes? Or at least 1200 water per minute. Especially once we overclock it, right? Oh, that might get a little spooky. Okay, good news, check my notes, we're actually fine. Thank goodness, or else I don't know what we would do! So we can just bring that over with our existing infrastructure here, meaning we can prepare our refineries. Unfortunately, I have a ton of blueprints for practically everything, so we're gonna use this basic refinery for solids, which has a liquid and solid input, but only a solid output. If I line this up correctly, everything will work out just fine. There we go. That should be enough space to deal with everything else we might have to do. Remember, we have to do a system for copper sheets and quartz crystals. And I think we can get 12 per row here, at least from my experience building the rest of these. Wait, why is that red? How long has this been a problem? I don't know. Sorry, just always am seeing stuff like that. I'm not perfect, okay? <laughs> the things all work out eventually, smile. It looks like everything is looking good here. Lined it up properly, nice. And then just one more at the end. Using overclocking, we should be fine. And the best part is, nothing ever is super daunting once you're already started, since we have so much infrastructure already available. And you know, thinking ahead and having a little bit of logistics space doesn't hurt either. Now that we have the water, everything we need for this entire project is already on location. It's just setting up the multitude of machines. But okay, we need somewhere around 800 quartz per minute for both the quartz crystals and the silica we're gonna have to do. Then we need all the copper sheets, which is like 400 per minute. I think the copper is being brought in via the trucks downstairs. So hopefully it's not a crazy journey. Oh, <laughs> literally right here. Awesome. Where's the bin? Right here, waiting. You better believe it. Thank you, past kids. So that's just one quick trip through the floor and that'll be done with pretty quick. And the quartz crystal is a different story. I think I'm bringing some in via a train and then a bunch in via a belt. So there are two quartz crystal nodes right there. 
Those are belted up over this way, and I have no idea where I brought all this stuff. Uh, okay, a little bit further down into the depths and to literally just here. And then we have to go over this way. Uh, okay, wait a second, that's not too bad because right through this store is all the refineries, yeah? Yeah, so ba da, just down through the floor again, probably through another floor. Oh, and we have one tile here that's free, so then we can go through the wall. And oh, hey, those refineries we needed. Fancy seeing you here, bud. Oh man, that, that is perfect. So all the copper sheets and quartz crystals are done. We had the right amount of machines here as well. It all worked out thanks to the overclocking, thankfully, or else this would have been a disaster. And our shopping is practically complete. Everything has been put together, including the silica. It's just four constructors here. And I have brought everything to our project area, which is this weird looking hallway. So we got the quick wire, sheets, quartz stuff, and wait a second, wait a second. What are we using for the crystal oscillator stuff? We're not using this recipe. I don't have any cable or reinforced iron plates. I think we're using this one. <gasps> oh, rhubarb. That's not good. See, the copper sheets are gonna be used with the quick wire to make the AI limiters. We just need the quartz crystal. Okay, yeah. We're gonna need like 50 crystal oscillators per minute, so that's gonna be a good chunk of rubber. Which means we gotta go on one more shopping trip. Ah, man, I thought we only had to grab the water. I was so jazzed. Uh, this shouldn't be too bad either, though. Again, the past cubes has helped us out considerably for today's project. And fortunately, right next door to our big aluminum plant here is our super massive rubber factory. And I think we have a huge amount of the rubber still available here. And we only need like 400 per minute or something like that up that way. I have to double check though. I haven't been here in a while. So we have one rubber train that is being completely utilized by the nuclear power plant. And then we have this one, Blue Crater Lake Rubber One Out. Uh, did I leave a sign? Signs! Pass cabs! What's going on? R1 out, full 780 per car. R2 out. Okay, that's for nuclear. And I guess this one isn't even used at all. Huh. Wait, how much rubber did we have available then? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> really? 780 times five? That's a good amount. But knowing me, I am probably gonna forget what the heck is going on, so I'll leave a couple signs for future kids to tell them that, hey, I'm stealing from this big train now. All right, it's time to chew. And we all know where to. You see, past kids, although goofy, sometimes making mistakes and all that kind of jazz, is usually quite prepared. And also, sometimes leaves gifts for future kids. And over by our uh, truck station here, I have the best gift of all. An open train station that I left space for forever ago. I didn't even know if I was gonna use this, but here we are now. <laughs> it's perfect. So we can say that we're gonna be taking like 400 rubber per minute in, and send this train on its way over. See you later, friend. And now we have all the pieces to the puzzle. Oh, and yes, of course, gotta mark that down on the board. So hopefully future kids can understand what the heck is going on here. And it's time to actually start playing the game. JK, actually. I enjoy the logistics part of this game almost as much as I do building the factories themselves. It, it, you know what? It's just all fun. Like, everything's so good now with blueprints. Anyway, uh, we gotta do a ton of stuff. We need the AI limiters, we gotta build a bunch of computers, circuit boards, the whole nine yards, which means we need systems. Basic systems of assemblers so getting started let's center these and these are going to be our circuit board systems we need five assemblers for this hopefully that doesn't clip or else i'm gonna be sad there we go those fit snugly over here all of the circuit boards will go over that way where we'll deal with the computers and then this big stretch will be for the ai limiters we need 10 assemblers for this and we're not gonna be overclocking them either. 
I've been overclocking most things in this playthrough, but after update 7, man did this game go through a huge optimization pass. And I'm not that worried about lag as much anymore. I'm actually more worried about power. You see, things have already gotten a little crazy, and I think even at this point, we're using, I don't know, oh, a max consumption of almost 200,000 megawatts? So yeah, again, without lag being such a big problem, and with building being so easy, why not, right? But we'll see how things go. Anyway, this is like a lot of our processing, at least the simple stuff. And I'll belt everything in a moment, but first we gotta look into the crystal oscillators. And we wanna make 50 of these suckers a minute using this recipe. So each manufacturer will make 1.875 per minute. That doesn't sound good. 50 divided by 1.875. Mmm, it's 27. That's a big number considering all of these chunky boys. And I don't think we have enough space in this little alley. But fortunately, we have enough space right next door here. I've been thinking about this the whole playthrough. And since we have to build 27 manufacturers, 27 divided by 9 is 3. And we can absolutely fit 3 rows through here. And before I go absolutely crazy building literally everything, I want to look into logistics real quick first. So because of how I set up the blueprints, items go in through this direction. But then for the inverse, the items have to go in through the other direction. So that'll be that direction for this set and this set of manufacturers. Okay, all of the items will be coming through this way at a point. So you want to send two thirds of the items all the way to the other end of this hallway, and then one third to that one system over there. How can we do that simply? Just with the stack of mergers, we need the three items. We're breaking things into thirds. We'll connect these belts together. Then we'll connect these belts together. And that deals with two thirds, and then one third, from the first splitter, we'll just go over to that one system at the end there. And of course, I'll make that look a lot more pretty later on. Then over in this direction, AI limiters, these bad boys. We have a problem with them. Quick wire, they take 100 per minute. We have 10 machines. That's a thousand quick wire per minute. That means at some point, we need to inject extra quick wire in. So one, two, three, four, five. That's gonna be right about here. Wait, no way. No way, dude. All the items need to be inputted from the other direction? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's gonna be the case, brother. Yeah, we're gonna turn this whole thing around. <laughs> uh, main thing is though, after five machines, we will have a merger in here. And then we'll have to have a separate belt coming from this direction and grabbing the rest of the quick wire to kind of refill the belt for the rest of the machines. And after all is said and done, there do be spaghetti, but it's all organized and it should work out pretty well. Not a lot of load balancing and everything else was pretty straightforward. All hooked up, ready to go and start once we finish off the rest of the production chain over here. So we just have the computers and the radio control units themselves left. Uh, of course, we're gonna build some uh, computers first, and we're just using a real simple recipe that takes circuit boards and crystal oscillators and makes a bunch of computers. We don't need a ton of them, so we can just overclock five assemblers here, and that project is practically done. So now the hard part, though, is those radio control units. Again, we're using the recipe right here, so we only need three inputs, but I wanna make 50 radio control units per minute. And if each manufacturer can only make 2.5 per minute, 50 divided by 2.5 is 20. So we gotta fit 20 machines in this little cube here. Which, you know what? End of the day, shouldn't be too bad. We might have to overclock a bit though. And also extend this floor a bit. We have this like weird little corner piece here that I didn't really intend on having, but you know what? Here it is now. And I'm sure we can decorate around it and make it look cool. Also, all of the belt work is gonna be very custom for this because I do have an idea. Because I wanna leave most of this factory area as a tall room, and at the end of this tall room, I wanna have a very tall manufacturing setup where I stack up two, probably two layers of manufacturers here making the final product. All right, after extending the floor a little bit, we can get like four 
placed in there. That's... Oh, actually, you know what? That's fine. We can get four there, another four here, and then we can double that up to 16, and then use some overclocking to figure things out. Yeah, because 20 divided by 16, 1.25. That means each of these will just need, like, half a power shard to be at 125%. And that doesn't use up too much power either. Okay, good. Very good. Now, as for the design, we're going to snug the next set of manufacturers right up and above here. And now, since we're not using very many items in each of these manufacturers, we can overflow stuff very efficiently. So we can just have one splitter in the middle here, and that could just go out that way. And then we could have another lift going up over this way. Oh, did I get that first try? First try, baby, let's go. But the main thing is, once we do that for every single manufacturer here, and for both sides, we're gonna have this centralized kind of lift look. And from the front, it should look really good, along with a bit of detail. Though I don't really want a ton of detail. Like, we'll probably have just some frames cutting through the platforms like so. Because I think we can just put in three exactly. No, I'll have to like figure out how exactly we're replacing them. We'll definitely just use some frames. And then inside the system, how many platforms do we have? 10. That's not a super easily divisible number, is it? Can we have one of these just in the middle? Uh, kind of? I might have to push these around a bit, but generally, I'd want to do something like that. Because again, we're only going to be seeing this from the front. And that looks really good having the extra support in the middle there. Maybe we just use like a frame pillar? But regardless, I feel this is the right direction. Oh, but once everything's put together and mirrored, that's when you can really see what I'm talking about. Yeah, having the belts mirrored in the middle here is like the best. It makes kind of like that winged kind of look, you know? But yeah, had to double them up a little bit because I forgot. One of the materials we're going to be using in here is aluminum casing. And we need like 800 of that per minute. And that ain't fitting on one belt, chief. So now we have twice the amount of splitters. But on a good note, I managed to center in this giant foundation pillar here. So now we have all three of them at equal length. And it won't annoy me for the rest of my life. And I'd say that's practically done. Nothing much more I really want to do here. All of the radio control units will end up in that bin. And those have to go like way up to the other side of the factory to make the pressure conversion cubes. And at this point, we are practically done. We have the computers here. We have all of the setup done. And we just have to hook up the uh, crystal oscillators to over there. The computers are already there. And then the casings, those aluminum casings. <laughs> They're gonna be a problem, I bet. They are way over this way, and we're already sending a bunch of them upstairs to make fused modular frames. So we're gonna have to cut off like 800 of those bad boys. So how many is this? 281.25? What's 800 divided by 281.25? 2.84. Okay, so like three of these things. One, two, three. Okay, looks like I'll have to go upstairs and do some load balancing, but it'll be fine. 281.25 times three is 843.75. Now that is gonna be a bit of a problem. How do we get 43.75 materials per minute out of this system? Well, I guess logically, if we just send over 800 casings to the RCU setup, the radio control unit setup, then the overflow will eventually go back over this way because those manufacturers won't be able to keep up. So there's always that logic, but I think we could make things a little bit more efficient and we could like split off maybe, maybe like 45 items per minute or so. And how we could do that is, well, first we've got to make a bunch of room and then abuse Mark 1 belts. So we'd have a Mark 1 belt go from this splitter to this one. Lat splits 30 this way and 30 that way. And really, we're gonna want another splitter here because we can take the 30 from this direction and make it 15. Now we just have to merge the 30 from here with a 15 that will be going out to the left there. And the other 15 will go this way. I just use a Mark 1 lift to get that 15 out of that corner. It clips a little bit, but I can live with that and merge it over, I guess, here, and that should be good to go. So, yeah, so that means like 1.25 
casings per minute are not going in the right direction, though. So I guess we're gonna get a little bit more crazy, and we're gonna build a smart splitter here, and we're gonna set up another conveyor lift over here, and then a conveyor belt to there. And you're gonna make the right output the priority, and the front output overflow. So that way we're saturating this line quite a bit before we start saturating the line over there. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And the only thing we've really done is improve the startup uptime of all of these machines, since they should have more materials a bit sooner. So probably getting started, this manufacturer will have an uptime here of maybe 80, 90%. And the fuse mod to their frames, which are upstairs and being used by the casings, will have a similar uptime. Whereas if we just overflowed everything to here first, and then to the next system, then this would probably be on 100% uptime, and then the fuse mod to their frames would be on like a 60% uptime. But I'd rather them be more equal than not, because we need both items at the exact same time in order to make these pressure conversion cubes. So yeah. Big mess. Not as big of a mess as this belt works about to be though. So we have this crazy belt. We'll combine it with an uh, yeah, we'll combine it with another machine or something like that. And we'll have two belts going over in that direction. But we have the logistics floor, so everything can just scoot over this way and run through the wall over here. And you know, I got a really cool idea. Once the belts run through this wall somehow, we are going to make a super massive conveyor pool. One problem with this huge tall room is that most of like the space is empty. So we're just gonna have this like super tall conveyor pool with maybe like two or three belts on it, just running through the whole setup, going over this way, bringing a couple items back and forth. And that should hopefully fill out the empty space there. So very silly idea, but I think it worked out. It, it's better than nothing, right? So now when we're walking through, when we look up, at least we can see that. It'd be more nice if I had planned out and put more belts on the ceiling, since we have all the ceiling tiles. But maybe we add in lights or some other kind of decoration. I'm not sure. Once all this factory is said and done, I'll do a whole like deco pass and figure things out. I added in a couple more big frame pillars down this way since it was pretty empty though. And that helped out, so maybe a couple of those over here. I don't know. Main thing is, everything's belted together now. Because we had the logistics path here, everything wasn't too crazy. And all of the belts end up over here and again to that bin. And I want to get this bad boy started so we can start stocking up. Because we already have a huge supply of fused modular frames. And it's going to take a minute to bring a belt from there to the top of our factory. Plus, I'm sure as all of this gets started, I'm going to find many, many, many problems. Okay. So that goes over there. Let's get a start on the circuit boards. Good. Then that goes to there. And this will get started on some AI limiters. Where are the quick wire things though? Right there. And then over here for the manufacturers, this will end up being the AI limiters. That is for the quartz crystals from the refinery and the rubber from the chew. All scooting through, bud. Oh, and we already got some AI limiters. Wonderful. So that can all get started then. <laughs> I love starting the factories like this. It's always so neat to watch it all kind of spring to life. It's my favorite thing about factory games, to be perfectly honest. Just seeing all the movement, intertwined systems. But it'll be a bit before we see this all go in full speed. Again, though, that's why I got it all started. So now we can belt this stuff all the way upstairs. And I just got the best idea in the world, actually. Wait. We have this huge stack of belts here. We can just have one of them going back this way. So that will follow to there. Come on. Yes. And then <laughs> that will end up going to this floor. And from this floor, we have easy access to our main tower. Our main logistics tower. So somehow we'll get a belt going from all the way down here right to the top because right past this floor, those are the blenders where we need the radio control units. Phew, okay, that's not a big problem then. And also I just thought of something really cool, but we're making 50 crystal oscillators per minute, right? So to help with the visuals around here, let's just make these Mark 1 belts. 
That way, they're a little bit more full. Get to see more of what we're producing instead of just, like, one thing zipping by every so often. <laughs> It'll be more fun for us. Do we have any radio control units yet, though? Probably not, eh? Nah. What's the problem? Oh, no, 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 no. It is running. Does that mean we're now in control? Ooh, you better believe it, bud. There we go. <laughs> we have our little lunch boxes. Fantastic. Oh, and this? This was a good idea. We're gonna do this a bit more over our factory here. Anyway, gotta quickly go upstairs and work on the final product. The most complex cube in the game. The pressure conversion cubes. So up here where we're making all of the fused modular frames, we had a bunch of space and I just threw in a bunch more assemblers like we've been doing literally all day. And I've hooked them all up to the radio control units so we can make the cubes. And a lot of cubes. And it all gets started with this. So everything gets split up. Half of the material goes in through the front, half through the back, and all the end products end up going over this way and into a bin. And let's make this a Mark I belt for our viewing pleasure. And you know what? Let's even have one just over here. So we can see our magnificent creation. Because this is pretty much one of the most difficult items to make in the game. Aside from the space elevator parts themselves. Like, we have had to build things all across the entire world here in order to make these freaking squares. But with these squares, we will be able to harness the power of neutron stars and build ourselves nuclear pasta, which is what we're gonna be doing next time. So I hope you all enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day. And bye-bye.